fogo, ué. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the second and final round of track battles in the Ultimate Miata Shootout Series. So in the last battle, we battled the ITB and B here against the Rotrex car. So for this next battle, we're gonna do the Rotrex car against Tommy Epiaz K Miata. So when we battled the Rotrex and the ITB car together, they were a dead draw at the end of the day. We couldn't declare a winner. But when we looked at the V-Box data for both cars, ultimately the supercharged Miata, the Rotrex, was just was faster lap times overall. So we figured that would be a better chance against Tommy's car. They were the closest in lap times uh, going head to head. So we are gonna run them together and see who is the, the king of the Ultimate Miata Shootout Series for this year. Um, we are gonna continue this series going forward. And next year we're gonna test different various tuning paths for the Miata, different generations and whatnot. We're just gonna keep it as an ongoing series and update the data accordingly. So, those of you that think your Miata is ready to compete, uh -oh. you know, contact us, we'll, we'll, we'll get you ready for next year, we'll get you in. <laughs> yeah, and like, you can, you can drop us at slipanglemedia at gmail.com if you're interested, send some pictures of your car in the full spec list and we will keep it in our, keep it in our pocket. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So let's get these battles on, shall we? Let's do it. So we have decided that we're going to run the Rotrex car versus Tommy's K24 Miata. And the reason being is this, is that Tommy's car is the complete inverse of mine and in, in the fact that that 2.4 liter to engine torque down low just dust mine coming out of corner exit. So when we've kind of messed around a little bit before on track, that car is definitely faster than mine. So we're going to see how the supercharged car does with it, hoping that the power of that supercharger kind of helps level the playing field a little bit against Tommy's car. Wheel spin, ooh, locking up those tires. If I could dust him here on the straight. Oh, he's right on my tail. Oh, baby, fucking race car. I forgot this thing was all hymned up. There's so much positivity in the, uh, in the way the suspension handles bumps. It's fucking Olins are delicious. Oh, and this VTEC power is, is uh, decisive.
Come on, baby. and rear grip on those tighter turns. Oh, I hear that K24 right on my tail. I was toying with you. It kept popping out of gear and I just reel you back in. Yeah. No contest. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like struggling for, I'm struggling for bite. Yeah. It yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of power in the way it's delivered. That torque out of out of like diggy corners just like eats eats cars up. All right, let's see what happens when you lead. Not that far off. Tommy's car definitely grips more though. It is lighter, we should add that. No iron block out front. Oh, I think I'm putting a little pressure on Ryan. Well done, Tommy. Well done.
the hill again. Up in the meat of that K24 power. Again, the gap we've built here is tremendous, and that was not having the ability to shift. This car was out of the power band the entire time. I didn't really look at the tack, but I think the highest we were revving it was six grand. Um, in, a, in a stock one of these, that's not even VTEC changeover, I don't think. Um, but I'm telling you, the difference from the driver's seat is the chassis. Being rose jointed and having the Olins, it just, it just, it's worth so much time just in predictability, just in knowing exactly what the car is going to do and being able to exploit every last iota of the performance. Um, it's just so exploitable. And that's where the blue car falls short is, ex is exploitability. You can't, you can't go 10 tenths and put and not and not make a mistake here and there because the tire the car just doesn't communicate with you quite as well so the biggest takeaway with this car is that there's a there's a big transition between understeer and oversteer with it at the limit and then when it does transition it's uh it's a little bit difficult to, to, to manage especially when you're trying to make it bite into a turn it is a little bit pushy so dealing with that and like trying to balance that makes it a little bit difficult and that's where i started to really lose time acceleration wise this car once it's on the pipe is like pretty close to that of tommy's if not the same um, but tommy's definitely having that that extra 0.6 liters of displacement gets right up and out of the corner a little bit quicker than this and um again like stock 1.8 from a 99 with iron block and the supercharger hanging on the front of this that that weight offset up front in this car definitely is a little bit of a disadvantage versus the lightweight all aluminum Honda motor. There you go, ready? Oh! <laughs> this about wraps up the first season of the Ultimate Miata Shootout Series here on the Slip Angle. But we're going to continue to air new episodes featuring other great cars besides just Miatas. Guys, one more reminder, uh, we are doing this out of our own budget. There's a lot of eyes on this project, so it's very important that we do get it the exposure that uh, shows its worth to allow us to continue to do this in the future. So, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and also check out our uh, Instagram page at Slip Angle Media for more daily posts. Thank you guys all so very much. We love you. Till next time. <laughs> oh, that's going to be perfect <laughs> after <laughs>